Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another movie review. I just recently got a chance to see <clears throat> Logan Lucky, which um, kind of got mixed reviews on the websites and the blogs and, and everything. And of course, truth be told, the trailer makes it look better than it really is, but I still consider it a very good movie. There, it has some slow parts and it's not laugh out loud funny like you think it would be for a comedy it's got quite a bit going on, and I, I really enjoyed it despite all that, but the characters are great, and I absolutely love Seth MacFarlane in this movie, even though he plays kind of a, a douchebag in this, and it's uh, very, very, very interesting. It's sort of like, uh, if you've seen Mordecai, it's, it's one of those things that has a lot of twists and turns, and you really have to be on your feet to catch them all. And then you realize, oh, yeah, that's why. Okay. And I, I kind of had a feeling. I, I just knew that it wasn't all put on. And th this is something that they had been planning for a long time. But um, Clyde and James, Clyde <laughs> actually had been in juvie before. And they talk about that. And it's so funny. But... Um, his brother, <clears throat> Clyde's a bartender. He works at the duct tape bar. Ha! Huh! Yeah, I love it. it. It actually takes place in Charlotte, North Carolina, of all places, and then West Virginia, because they actually play country roads. But, um, <coughs> it's, it's a good movie. It's, it's not the best movie I've ever seen, but I did enjoy it. I liked it because there were some parts that really made me laugh out loud which I wasn't expecting, and, and Daniel Craig, his expressions, his his slang, his use of colloquialisms, it was absolutely perfect, and it made me feel like I was at home, because I've heard a lot, I've, I've got a little bit of Southerner in me, if you couldn't tell, and part of that is just, it brings it all back for me, and it just makes me feel like I'm at home again, I thought, oh, I've never left, but it's, uh, the story even though it seems straightforward, really isn't straightforward. There's quite a bit going on, and you think, this is a red herring, it's all a ruse, and I won't say as to why, but, oh yeah, you're you're given clues throughout, and I'd probably have to see it again, just because it's so clever, and the casting is sensational. I, I thought that they did a really good, good job with the casting, I really liked it. Uh, music was great. Scenery was beautiful. Uh, Charlotte scenery. The Charlotte part was actually the the very climactic part of the film, and they had Daryl Waltrip, and I I knew they would, and I said, you know, if if they're gonna have him, he's going to have to say his signature buzz phrase, and he did. He said, "Boogity boogity boogity, let's go racing." I thought, "Yay, he did it!" I mean, pff, I'm not a fan of NASCAR, but I love Daryl Waltrip, so. That was a little bit of an extra <coughs> bonus for me. And, of course, they sang Country Roads, which I thought they would. I th I knew that they were going to do this at some point in time. The little girl actually sings it. Um, she's a very interesting character. She is in this kind of um, broken home situation. And... Uh, you know, it actually has a happy ending, but it's it's sort of Lady or Tiger at the end because it's a little bit up in the air. You think, hmm, I wonder. It kind of makes you think, but it just uh, people got oh, people got <laughs> on the wrong side of James Logan, and he has the he has what's called the Logan curse, and. <coughs> There's a reason for that. And, um, of course, Clyde is only one arm. They explain that. And Joe Bang, I, I love Joe Bang. He, he's such a great character. He, he's very, 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 very useful because he can make explosives. But in this case, when they're making their robbery, he does it in a more covert way that no one would have ever th conceived it was just is so ingenious you think this is the brains of the outfit james and clyde aren't really all that bright they they kind of, well actually you know it's it's funny they play dumb they're not really 
that dumb. They're not really country bumpkins. They're not completely oblivious. Because when it comes right down to it at the very end of the film, it's like, oh, they were running this game the whole time. They knew what was going on. They only just had a facade. And, oh, it's just it's so interesting. It's, um... It's a very good movie. I actually, I, I really enjoyed it. It, it wasn't a laugh, out, a, a laugh out loud riot, but it was quite entertaining. And it wasn't one of those movies that uh, just keeps you um, in a constant grip of suspense or an adrenaline. It's a little bit different. It's more sophisticated and, of course, there's a lot of Southern humor. <clears throat> I love that part where they're talking about NASCAR. Why did you, why you had to hurt NASCAR? Hurting NASCAR is like hurting America. <laughs> you don't hurt America. <laughs> I thought you might be a redneck if, uh, you might be a redneck if, or here's your sign. <laughs> but as, as far as movies go, it's... Um, it's pretty good. It's a solid movie. I enjoyed it. I, th I thought it was good. It wasn't the greatest movie I've ever seen. I would give it three out of five. I probably should have seen Hitman's Bodyguard, which I really want to see because I love Samuel Jackson. Um, I'm going to see it at some point in time anyway because it's my type of film. I, I That type of movie is, is more my speed. I, I love a good action adventure because it's those are always epic, but Logan Lucky is actually a very underrated film. The reason I say that is because it's just, it's, it's done by a female director. And I thought, oh, thank God there's hope for me yet. So <coughs> it was well done. It was funny. It had a lot of good one-liners. Of course, there were some kind of lulls. I, I wasn't bored, but it was engaging. It had that kind of very fast-paced um, dialogue, and it was very clever. I thought there was there was a lot of there were a lot of things that I thought were really exceptionally done. I would have to watch it again, as I'm thinking that there were things I probably missed that uh, would have clued me in a little bit earlier as to, hey, these these guys, they're not so idiotic as you think. They're they're not total complete morons, but. It's just, it's, it's, it's different. Like I said, there are a lot of cliches that, that go along with it, with the Southern atmosphere and all that, but like you would expect. And I was thinking, you know what? Some of this is probably accurate because I've, uh, <clears throat> I've been in North Carolina and yeah, I can say oh, some of it's, well, actually Virginia, when they go into Virginia and have the, the mobile, um, medical van that's actually that's accurate believe it or not because uh on 60 minutes they had a group of women that they go around into this the rural countryside the people that don't have access the people don't, who don't have a cvs or walgreens just right around the corner like some of us suburbanites do oh we're so lucky and blessed but we forget about people who who don't really have that and that's why i think that um we should legalize drones well that might cause a problem but People in those kind of communities could get their insulin, and that would be important. And personally, I think insulin should be done away with, and I know it's kind of a controversial thing to say, but Big Pharma big pharma has more than enough money in its coffers, and it doesn't need any more. I could go into Big Pharma right now, but I really don't want to go down that rabbit hole, so I'm not going to go there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it does good, but... Most of it's more harm than it is good, unfortunately, because I took a course in regulatory affairs, so yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Half of the time I wanted to throw my binder across the room and made me so mad, but I rarely ever get that angry. And half of, I mean, 90%, I would say I would be seeing red. It would just, ooh, about, damn you, <laughs> you know, just throwing stuff. But um, it was a really good movie. I had to wait a while before the movie actually started. The movie started late, so I I thought, you know what, I don't care. I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy it. I came in with an open mind, and I I actually um, I liked it. I, I thought it was uh, it, it was well done. The characters were fleshed out. They had their own little uh, quirks and <laughs> flaws, and of course, uh, 
My favorite character instantly became Clyde. I, I love Clyde. <laughs> He, uh, he was the one-armed bartender. He lost his arm. They, they go into why. I won't say why because it's a um, plot point. It's important, so my lip is zipped. But I really like him. I think the reason I like him is because I like that actor, and I just think he's hot as hell and sexy, and I would marry him. <laughs> but he's probably taking... All the, all the guys I like, they're either too old or married. Him... I stated this before, but Daniel Craig was absolutely a genius. He his role was <laughs> the the I think it was the cherry on top of the Sunday for me. Is just the the Sunday had sprinkles and then the maraschino was Daniel Craig. <laughs> but um, let's see, I can't remember who else was in it. But like I said, the 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 casting could have been more well done and Seth MacFarlane was more of a kind of a backup character I would say more of a um kind of a side character he was a character that you know you were happy when he got his just desserts because he was a real a-hole <laughs> I don't like to see him play a-holes even though he's good at playing those characters because I know that deep down he's really not but he can pull off a real um jackass if <laughs> if and when he wants to easily um i love mr mcfarlane <laughs> i would definitely marry him in a heartbeat uh but enough about all my celebrity crushes that's about all i gotta say uh i'm going to be going to carmel tomorrow and having some good food <laughs> For once, so I've, I've been having really weird cravings, and I can't really explain it, but it's a good thing I'm going because I've been having Mediterranean cravings, so it's a Greek fest, and I had never gone. This will be my first time going, so we'll just see what comes of it, but a lot has happened. I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience. I won't say the name of the company because I just think that's wrong, but... Uh, I had, <coughs> I had, uh, gone into, I, I would just, I was feeling lonely and I was feeling desperate and I just, I wanted to go into this one company thinking, oh, they can help me. They can match me with somebody who would be worthwhile and high caliber and so on and so forth. And, um, I didn't realize how much it was going to be and it cost me quite a bit, but, I reneged on that, actually. I rescinded. And uh, the reason being is I, re I <laughs> then came to the realization that uh, meeting people, actually having a, um, a date with one of my potential matches would have cost me the same amount of money. And I thought, oh, heck no. But... I'm getting my money back by the end of the month, so that's good. I can pay the mortgage. That's more important than me finding love at this point in time. I, I have to worry about finding a new place to go and, and where to go and how to get there. And I'm thinking late October at the latest because um, I actually got a second chance. And I'm going to tell a story. Back in 2016... <clears throat> I really wanted to meet Ninja Sex Party. I have a massive crush, crush on Dan Avedon, as a lot of people know, if, if they know me well. Um, he's inspired me. He's gotten me through a lot of rough times. I write Eroses about him, about my character. My, ava my, um, my persona, or avatar in this case, is um, Azure Mist. Azure Mist is everything that I could only hope I could become. Um, I'm getting there. It's just hard, hard to, well, I shouldn't say hard. It's, it's a process. It's, it can be done. It's, it's not something that happens overnight. But I think part of me is always going to love Lay Daniel because he is somebody who had quite a bit of, um, adversity in his life but um he overcame that 
he over he really overcame that and he's doing what he loves and that's to me is so motivational that's what I want to do I want that's why I decided to stick with my plan um I still want to travel I, I still want to see the world I want to visit my friends and go places and do things and I'm, I'm really getting outside my comfort zone for the first time in my life I am not existing I am living I am living life because I was always just so concerned about mom and dad my dad died last year he got worse over time I was going to actually I had tickets for PopCon to to meet Ninja Brian and Danny but I never had the chance to actually say, you know, hey, dude, you're, you're really, you're really an uplifting spirit, and I consider you a kindred soul, and I love you, and I know you never marry me, but you know, a girl can dream, so keep me in the back of your mind. I know I'm in a long queue, but keep me in the back of your mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually brave enough to, to say that because it took me a while to confess to a coworker. Of course that didn't work out, but I had another guy that I recently found out who was a liar. Um, so I'm kind of, actually I should say I'm not kind of, I'm, I'm staying away from internet relationships or just online dating, dating as a whole, you know, screw it. I don't want to mess with it. I'm going to have just, I'm going to do things. I'm going to keep myself occupied and I don't want to get involved with anybody for now. If love comes, let it come. But being single isn't a, disease, isn't a disease, and I don't know why so many people at my work think that I'm unusual for not having a boyfriend. I'm, I'm very particular. I'm very picky. So what? Let's focus on what I do have. Let's focus on <laughs> just the, the contributions I'm making at this point in time in my life, which would be quite a bit. I'm, I'm doing a lot of writing. I'm being very creative. And I got a lot coming down the pike, so stay tuned for that. I've got Christmas parodies I've already posted. They will go up during Christmas. <sighs> but I have a lot to look forward to, and it's um, definitely keeping me occupied. Or as my dad would say, occupied. Uh, that's all i got to say, so I will definitely keep all of you magicians updated. Stay tuned. Don't switch off that dial. Boy, that sounds old-fashioned. Until next time, live on and prosper. Ciao, tutti.